These headsets offer gateways to augmented and virtual reality, but to make that possible, they contain entire unseen universes of their own. To access them, we'll need X-ray vision. Join us as we use our Neptune Industrial CT Scanner and Voyager Analysis software to explore the unbelievable engineering packed into the Apple Vision Pro and MetaQuest headsets. You can explore these scans for yourself. Just click the link in the show notes below. Let's start with how the external profile shapes the internal form factor of these headsets. When we look inside the Vision Pro with our CT scans, we can see it's a product that puts design first. Everything inside the Vision Pro is canted to make the most of the available internal space without detracting from the contours of the brushed aluminum frame and laminated glass front plate. The main circuit board is built around a flexible PCB ribbon, and electronics are packed in here at a range of different angles. To explore them layer by layer, we have to orient our two-dimensional slice planes along multiple axes. Both the MetaQuest Pro and the MetaQuest 3 initially appear to have similarly curved exteriors. But when we look inside them with our CT scans, we see that the primary elements are all stacked on a single plane, representing a traditional mainboard approach. It's time-tested and cost-effective, especially for off-the-shelf components. Apple's components, on the other hand, are most likely built for their exclusive use and aren't available to other manufacturers. At a granular level, this embodies Apple's design philosophy, but it also speaks to their overall engineering approach. Apple's designers are famous for giving their engineer colleagues tough challenges to deliver on ambitious hardware and software performance goals without compromising the overall look and the feel of the product. Designers define the requirements, and engineers at Apple make it work. The Meta headsets suggest not so much that the emphasis is reversed, but rather that the products have different priorities and target distinct markets. Apple, at least for now, is going all in on early adopters who are ready to drop $3,500 for a new kind of computer. Meta wants to get as many users into the metaverse as fast as it can, and that means offering their technology at a more accessible price point. To put that into perspective, the Quest 3 is one-seventh the price of the Vision Pro. But how exactly do these bottom lines add up? Let's start with the core of the headset experience, the displays. Even though all of these headsets feature a video pass-through that's a live feed of what your eyes would otherwise see, at the end of the day, none of them are glasses. They're just screens strapped to your face. In the case of the Vision Pro, that's two micro OLED Sony displays. These are screens that, according to Apple, have more pixels than a 4K TV for each eye. In our CT scans, we see not just the panels themselves, but an intricate supporting architecture, including a web of cabling and connectors. And to make sure the displays are positioned in exactly the right place for your eyes, this motor assembly automatically adjusts them based on the distance between your pupils. On the Meta headsets, this is done manually. That makes the Quests much easier to share with other people, while the Vision Pro is a bespoke experience, down to the custom lenses that snap satisfyingly onto this ring of rare earth magnets. But the screens themselves aren't the real story here. It's the power behind them. For the Vision Pro, it's Apple's custom silicon, the M2 and R1 chips. The M2 is the same chip used in MacBooks, and it's there to handle high computational loads, running Vision OS and the displays. It works in tandem with the R1 chip, which manages the array of sensors for spatial computing tasks. Both Quests are equipped with the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2, a processor designed specifically for AR and VR workloads. In the Quest Pro, the Snapdragon XR2 is tasked with driving the high-resolution displays and processing data from multiple sensors for inside-out tracking, hand tracking, and more. All of the headsets allow you to use your hands as input devices. Meta leads with its handheld controllers, an array of simultaneous localization and mapping, or SLAM cameras, 3D thumbstick sensors, and action trigger pressure sensors reveals the thoughtful engineering that goes into creating an intuitive control scheme. An experimental version of hand tracking has also been available for Meta since 2023, driven by the inside-out cameras on the faces of the headsets. The Vision Pro requires users to drive the UI with a combination of hand tracking and eye tracking. To make this possible, an arsenal of sensors is required. Bordering the Vision Pro's display, we find the eye tracking IR cameras. The analogous components in the Quest Pro are positioned in a ring around the lenses. Along the lower edge of the Vision Pro, we find a LiDAR scanner right at the bridge of the nose, flanked by the two-part true depth camera. That's the same technology used on the iPhone's front-facing camera and for Face ID. Downward cameras take care of hand tracking, and IR illuminators ensure that tracking works even in low light. Sensitive MEMS microphones positioned at regular intervals pick up voice commands and fine-tune spatial audio. The Quest 3, meanwhile, wears its sensors on its sleeve. It has a four-camera array in two vertical stacks on its face. 
Two of the cameras perform spatial tracking, and the other two capture video for the pass-through. In the center, we find a time-of-flight sensor. LiDAR sensors, like the ones in the Vision Pro, emit precise laser pulses to create detailed 3D maps. That's ideal for complex AR spatial mapping. Time-of-flight sensors, like the one on the Quest 3, are slightly different. They employ infrared light for depth sensing, which works well for VR interactions and is also more cost-effective than LiDAR. The choice between LiDAR and time of flight ultimately hinges on the required precision and application, with LiDAR suited for high resolution needs and time of flight for general depth information. If we look in the same spot on the Quest Pro, we'll find an empty space where the time of flight sensor was initially slated to go, but it was ultimately dropped from the production model. The Quest Pro, released in 2022, was marketed as offering a premium, indeed professional, experience. The Quest 3, despite being geared more towards gaming than creative applications, benefited from an additional year of development, and in the end, delivered a more mature technology. Let's make our way over to the spatial audio systems. In the Vision Pro, these are powered by two audio pods, one on each side of the headset. Each has a dual driver setup capable of delivering a surround sound experience tailored to the user's head and ear geometry. In the Quest 3, we see a more minimalist internal view, but with the same approach of sound channeled directly into the wearer's ear. Spatial audio works by creating a sound field that mimics real-life acoustics, making it seem like sound is coming from all around you, including from above and behind. This is achieved through algorithms and audio processing techniques that simulate how sound waves interact with the environment and the human ear. To make all of this possible, some serious computing power is needed. These headsets work hard, and the beefy M2, R1, and Snapdragon chips inside them generate substantial heat. The Quest Pro adopts both active and passive thermal management technologies. Our CT scan shows a unibrow-shaped copper heat pipe and two cooling fans sandwiched between the displays and the motherboard. Crapping into the pipe, we can see a little fluid, as well as its wicking structure. The Quest 3, meanwhile, has only one fan and no heatsink. In the Vision Pro, there's no giant heatsink. Instead, we find an elegant solution. Active cooling with strong micro-blowers. This is the same structure you'd find in an HVAC system or an industrial blower, but on a very small scale. These centrifugal fans are doing a double job. Each of them is cooling both a chip and a display circuit board. In our CT scan, we see them mounted with thermal compound, an adhesive that fixes the Nautilus-shaped fan to the PCB. The primary circuit board itself is positioned directly on the metal chassis, which likely acts as a passive cooling element, absorbing and spreading the heat across a wider surface area to be carried away by the airflow. There's a high-density ball bearing at the hub of the fan. This is key to its whisper-quiet operation. We also find flow-straightening vanes on the fan outlet, which may be both an acoustic consideration and a design consideration. These vanes guide heat away from the wearer's face in order to avoid affecting the user experience. We've talked about power management, but we can't forget the differences in the approach to power supply seen in these three headsets. The Quest Pro has an integrated 20-watt-hour twin-cell battery. It's positioned in the back of the headset, it's rare in that it follows a curved form factor. This lets it contour to the user's head, and it also acts as a counterbalance to the front, improving weight distribution and comfort. The battery is attached with a single connector, and it's also attached to two flex cables. These are a little mysterious. They may be there to detect any flexing or swelling of the batteries, or they could be part of a test fixture used during the manufacturing process, where batteries could be put through a charge cycle in situ to ensure that they don't deform or that their performance isn't impacted by the assembly. The Quest 3 has an integrated 19 watt hour lithium polymer battery that sits between the displays and the circuit board, right in the front of the headset. Despite the battery capacity not being that much less, the Quest 3 weighs 207 grams less than the Pro. The Vision Pro, on the other hand, draws power from an external 36 watt hour battery pack connected to the headset with a proprietary connector. Inside the battery pack, our CT scan discovers three separate battery cells with a honeycomb plate separating two of them. This plate could be there as a heat sink or to provide rigidity, and the punched out honeycomb pattern could be a form of light weighting. This pack already weighs in at a hefty 353 grams. These headsets have all achieved some truly impressive engineering feats, condensing today's most advanced displays, computing, and machine learning technologies into wearable devices that offer fully transportive experiences. Industrial CT offers the ultimate window into their inner workings. And what better way to immerse yourself in these CT scans than to open them in Voyager on one of these headsets? You can see for yourself now and discover exactly how AR and VR become a reality by visiting the link in the show notes below and exploring these scans for yourself.